suppression of the use of marijuana and of the forces lurking behind it are the most important jobs this department is now engaged in. In 1930, the records on marijuana in the Washington office of the Narcotics Division scarcely filled a small folder like this. Today, they fill cabinets. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Coloradians, and everyone that's smart enough to listen from the outside. It's one of the most amazing plants we've ever discovered. The pot party, the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a cup. Please! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Stone de Petit. With your host, as always, it's me, Kip, and I'm across the computer from the whole crew. How are we doing, everybody? Great. Wonderful. <laughs> Stupendous. Cool. I'm, well, I expected it out of Eve, but Chris, I expected you to bring a little more gusto. Eve, I'm just kidding. I'm doing great. After uh, our last episode, let's uh, talk about that squid in calamari because that shit fucked. Goodness gracious. I know Eve had to skedaddle, but that was a wonderful little appetizer for a Monday afternoon. I think Eve would have loved it. I think she would have enjoyed it. You you like calamari, don't you, Eve? Uh, I'm, I'm open to it. I don't hate it. It's just like I don't really choose to go she's, for it she's not going to stick around after work and hang out with us just to eat calamari is what she's saying at least that's what i heard she's okay. like i'll eat it if i was with my friends on my own time, <laughs> but i'm not going to do it with you two slap no no i'm sure it was good though like how did he make it it yeah. was really well p- prepared so he made kind of like a tempura <laughs> batter that had squid ink in it as well it was very light airy and he actually used what Chris and I know very well as a whippet gun, but I guess he used it for culinary purposes. And then he hit it in a bowl and then tossed the rings of the calamari in there. And then, I mean, they flash dry two minutes, three minutes max, literally. And so then he hit it with a little crema, little lime zest. It was a delightful bite. And I, I mean, we were really poking the bear trying to get him to add it to his menu just for regular usage. But all the same, it was fucking delicious. Dude, and we we really have to make a point to try to get out there maybe this Sunday and snag a sandwich. Yeah, I'm definitely down to go support the homies, Chris. Maybe we can swing, swing the sticks and then get out there. Yeah. Know, make a little day of it. Um, speaking of making a day of it, this weekend, we'll kind of recap a little bit of last week. We were dragging ass on Monday, but we got the interview completed. Um, I thought Jess, our buddy that was in town for the same wedding we were partying all weekend for, was a great second or third chair. He killed it. Did Did he mention that he was going to uh, throw that one question in there before, or did you have no, no in idea? fact, he said he would love to just sit here because he listens to the podcast where, where he lives. Yeah. And just kind of be a fly on the wall. And then I was like, well, we'll get just asked the question. So, I mean, you got, if you're going to hang out and I thought he did a bang up job, not only asking questions, but answering them as well. So unfortunately he's not with us today and we're all remiss for it. We, I mean, I just felt like we were a great little uh, four pack, you know, he killed it. Well, we have a great episode for everybody today too. We're going to talk a little bit about the great eats we had last week. We posed a question to the community on social media about restaurants you would consider like the one shop, like if you're taking friends that are coming to town, where would you take them to showcase, you know, Denver's best attributes or restaurant scene? So I figured we could talk a little bit about that. And then we'll dive into things as folks are listening to this. Tonight is the big eat. Chris, 70 plus vendors are about ready to get rowdy with food, beverage, and all the bells and whistles, courtesy of our friends over at Eat Denver, the nonprofit for independent restaurants here in Colorado. It's going to be awesome. Chris, we've been doing this event for a couple of years now. It's a hoot. It's it's one of my favorites here in the city. Like it's just the amount of the amount of vendors out there, like the amount of quality food that's coming out, it's it's awesome. And it's huge. It's massive. I mean goodness but before we dive into all of that we would be stupid to not give a shout out to our sponsors our friends over at pine melon i don't know if you noticed but every wednesday they seem to have choice drops of delicious meats things from you know brunson 
meats, folks like Grandma's Greens. I mean, all sorts of great, I mean, River Bear. There's a litany of different options. Stagecoach, all the local foods seem to be really vibing right now. I saw that they had Palisade peaches on their menu. No matter what your diet is or what your schedule may dictate, you need to be using your you need to be using Pine Melon for your delivery service of groceries. Goodness, I'm missing this one today. I'm still thinking about these meat sweats. Um, but you'll get your meat sweats as well by firing in your order from Pine Melon. If you have not used them before, they actually work with 200 plus farmers, meat purveyors, grains, mills, all of the bells and whistles across the state to highlight local industry and to get it into people's hands. Not just consumers, but restaurants and business owners alike. You can sign up through Pine Melon. They have family options, meal plans, all of the above. And if it's your first time shopping, you can use promo code STONED, S-T-O-N-E-D, for $60 and free groceries. Isn't that awesome? You can't beat that with a stick. Amazing deal. Amazing. Well, Chris, let's dive into it. You know, not only is Pine Melon good food, but so was everything we had last week between the wedding festivity snacks, as well as the question I posed earlier about restaurants you would use to showcase Denver. I ate like a fucking champion both before and during the whole wedding festivities. What was your favorite bite from the weekend that was? Well, I mean, I'll dive into the wedding bites, but before then, uh, I had some family in town, and we actually went to uh, Point Easy on Thursday. And it's been, it's been a minute since I've uh, checked that place out. Um, you know, only been there like two or three times. And going back there, uh, dude, it was packed. And it's a great venue, and the food was top-notch. Um, we mainly, like... I didn't really know, but I mean, they hand make all their pastas and their pastas were on point. Um, and like one of our favorite ones was just like this traditional like red sauce pasta. We thought like, oh, OK, this is just going to be like uh, whatever. But dude, for some reason, I'm not quite sure like what made it so great. But the tomato sauce that they made that they put on it just had so much goddamn flavor. Um I'll I'll have to look up what it was on the menu, but that was fucking fantastic. Um, just everything there was really good. Their wine list is actually pretty approachable, and they had some damn good cocktails. So I highly recommend checking that out, checking that place out, like for your next date night or night out. Let me check this menu really quick. Do it, and I can ramble for a few minutes. Um, oh, friend- oh, their French fries. Speaking of which, I saw that post earlier that you did yesterday about French fries. And dude, they've got they've got the thin fries that you love. And they've got this, they make like a daily aioli. And yeah, like you you would put these uh French fries up there with your uh number one. Um but yeah, we so we had we also had this bucatini nero, which was like kind of sauteed calamari. And then it was served over like kind of like a, a little bit of fennel and garlic butter. And that shit was so goddamn good. We had a shepherd's pie gnocchi. Ooh. You know, that Which, tickles my fancy. Yeah. They had like short, a little bit of short rib, like some pickled vegetables. Um, and then these just little like kind of really good, nice seared gnocchi on it. So I thought you might like that one. That is. And, you know, it's a wintertime staple for me, for sure. Like, I literally make that shit, like, once a month. But hearing how it can be either, like, deconstructed or, like, re like evaluated, that's the creativity that chefs have that I sure as fuck don't have. Like, when I'm doing our little at-home cooking sessions, I'm pretty plain Jane, or I have someone like you or Alex send me a recipe, and I'll follow that for the most part. Um, But, like, that creativity of coming up with it, That's a great way to, you know, recreate a shepherd's pie. You've got my full attention between shoestring French fries, my favorite fall and autumn uh, snack. I mean, and like you said, it still slays. Like last time we were there, you know, it sounds like they haven't skipped a beat. So you have my full attention. And I'm sure some listeners are like, damn, I haven't been to Point Easy recently or at all. I need to check this place out. 
Yeah, and they, I think they've got they've got a pretty good happy hour that starts earlier in the evening. Um, so that they've got some fun bites on there. Their French fries are on there, of course. Um, but yeah, I mean they've got some good happy hour cocktail deals. So if you want to get in there for happy hour, check it out. I definitely will. Um, and I was in the same side of the town as you were. You know, you were over there kind of in the Whittier. I took our buddy Zach, who used to work here in Colorado in the food game as well. So he was like, show me what I've been missing. And so I had to take him over to see Penelope at Yuan Wonton. I mean, how could you not, right? Like those dumplings. And I think since he left, they were not even an iteration of the food truck yet. So he was like in all. He loved the spicy peanut, as did I. They had um, a Tom Ka, no, excuse me, a Cal Soy going as well, which had mm-hmm. that kind of curried broth and those like crispy nudes on top. It fucking slapped. Some traditionals and some water fried bowels. I mean, it's just every time steady fucking Eddie. And I even, you know, was thinking about it because I wanted to ask the community. So we did. And I, here's some of the answers of if you have people coming into town, whether it's family, friends, Folks that don't get out to Colorado too terribly often, where would you take them? Um, I, I take all my family to Yuan Wonton and Hop Alley because I love those two, and I prefer Asian cuisine for for, for anything. And, you know, you mentioned Point Easy, and that one slaps. Hop Alley was up there. One of your favorites, Annette, was also one of the most highly recommended. Lucinia was also on that list. And then, of course, the tried and true Tavernetta where I know Lindy loves it whenever she comes to town, you yeah. know, things like that. So it sounds like kind of the community's in the same camp, but there's also some sleepers in there like Spuntino, which doesn't need to be forgotten. Alma Fondafina, which is a relatively new location, but a spot that if you haven't been here in a minute, that's a great new spot to take some friends and family. And so I just wanted to give a shout out to those restaurants that the community sees how great you are. They love bringing in their friends and family as well. And we love you dearly. Um, go for it. And don't forget Brasserie. I mean, we've got, I've got more family in town this weekend. So we're going to Brasserie Brixton and then going to hit it with that one two punch with a uh, visit to Yacht Club. There you go. I took, I tried my parents over at the Yacht Club and best of luck to them this weekend at Tails down in New Orleans. The best bartenders in the world will be descending down there. Um, including our friend Michelle from Hell or High Tiki, or excuse me, no, from the Electric Cure. She will be competing as well. So we wish everybody a great luck. But at the same time, that's a great location to send everybody down to, Chris. A little Brixton combo platter with a yacht club. Grab a pocket dog before you go. I dig it. I dig it. Uh, Dude, speaking of wedding bites, I mean, I think we can both agree on Cirque Kitchen and the uh, Tots. So Cirque Kitchen, for those that don't know, is a food truck based out of Denver. And they're not doing traditional food truck cuisine. They're going a little bit off the wall with a little bit more fine dining or refined approach, I should say. Not fine dining. A refined approach to their cuisine. I thought they fucking killed it. They had fun, lively snacks at our kind of welcome party, rehearsal dinner party at My Boy Tony. They pulled up to the side. The tater tots were a gift from God. But we would be stupid to not talk about the fried artichokes, the chicken Caesar salad sandwich. Whew, that's a mouthful. I mean, they had a lot of fun and playful dishes. They have like bruschetta with, you know, a little bit of uh, burrata and then some pickled veggies on top. Hit it with a little balsamic. All, everything they had was a delightful bite. I could not, I mean, agree more. And that was my first time getting to try that food truck. I know that you were one of the folks that kind of helped refer them to uh, the groom and bride for the festivities. And so it seemed to work out. And Chris, if you had to put your money where your mouth is, you did a beautiful job. Great Thank recommendation. You. And shout out to that team. I mean, obviously, Callan, who used to be a member of our team, I mean, they fucking killed it. I mean, I thought that was really great. And then Saturday night, and and they were in the news on Monday morning as well, and it kind of is a perfect segue into the next topic of conversation. But our friend Cliff, from what was formerly known as Bodega, now called ODB's, set up a taco bar 
for the guests at the wedding. So obviously everyone knows that Bodega, now called ODB's, give me a minute. It's kind of like transitioning from January, you know, December 23 to January 24. Give me a yeah. month buffer to get the, the names right. Um, but at the same time, they fucking slayed it. And they've always been a creative location. Like they went viral just two weeks ago for that short rib and fr- uh, pan fried cheese curd sandwich. And they did it again with those bang up tacos, a short rib taco with a fluffy shell, a delightful little shrimp bite as well. Um, you just couldn't beat it with a stick. It was really fucking solid. Yeah. And um, yeah, I love that uh, shrimp taco. That was my go to. With that uh, habanero crema. Yeah. But dude, uh, what was cool too is like, I must be living under a rock because I've never heard about the Savoy the location, the venue for the place. Um, and it's an awesome venue. Yeah, so it's right there kind of in the uh, Rhino Five Points area. And I had not heard of it either. It's kind of tucked behind there. It's almost like speakeasy vibe, but there's a fucking like big ass like concert venue in there. It was perfect for what, 100, 150 people party. Welcome bar and everything ready for you. Gorgeous little, you know, wood floors the paneling in the walls, the posters, everything was really, it was a very gorgeous location and the bride and groom looked gorgeous themselves. So I know that sometimes they listen to pod when they have some free time. So shout out to JG and EC. We won't dox you. Nobody wants to get doxed by us. I can guarantee that. But at the same time, um, we were eating good in the neighborhood all motherfucking weekend. And I also went to, stone cellar bistro out here in old town arvada i've glazed their hams before they are fucking awesome they kill it jordan brandon the whole team over there um it's the they were in best of westward or best of by westward uh molly or their team had them in there um and they deserve all the accolades and more i think they're just doing a great job and a very fresh breath for Old Town Arvana, one that we desperately needed to get away from the 68 fucking shitty Americanized taco locations in the neighborhood. They fucking killed it. I was thoroughly impressed. And so I've been eating like a champ and it's not going to stop this weekend either. But speaking of Bodega, how about getting C and D from a fucking nether independent restaurant out of Kansas City? Like the capital C word for that restaurant right there like don't you get it and and also i gotta say like the the term bodega it's kind of like it's kind of like it was kind of like trying to trademark the term chili crisp like it just like bodega is so widely used like get the fuck out of here yeah it almost has the general concept and it's not like the bodega of Kansas City is even like what folks would ever think of. They would think of like a New York style chopped cheese, you know, quick grab and go sandwiching, you know, a coffee or go. So I don't know what the fuck high horse they're on, but ODBs, hopefully they don't get seen deep from Wu Tang Clan. But at the same time, I love the homage and uh, it doesn't matter. Change the name all you want. They're still serving up dank motherfucking food over there. So go see our friends on 38. New name, same great snacks. You can't beat it with a stick. E, okay, did so, you, oh, go. Well, I'm wondering, like, I see, I just searched in Kansas Bodega Restaurant, and there's a La Bodega. Yeah, uh, that may have been it. That was it. I mean, get the fuck out of here. It's a, it's a taco place. Tapas. Well, don't give them any more free ads, but yeah. No. If you're in Kansas City, go TP their house. Um, <laughs> either way. Yeah, we sounds like we both had a big time. I mean, I was with you for most of it. Eve, how was your weekend? Did we miss anything? Nope. Didn't miss nothing. Did you Eve, what did you book? do? It was too yeah, hot. What did you do? I don't even remember at this point. It was just fucking hot. That's all I remember. Stayed inside. Did you go did you go on a bender? Is that why no. you remember? <laughs> no, I probably should have, but no, I didn't. Actually, I mean, go on a bender. We need you. We need you straight line. Yeah, I, I would pay a lot of good money to just see Eve. Just she's like four days, just slugging hooch. And comes into the podcast on Monday and just like spits on us and quits. She's like, I can't do this anymore. Fuck y'all. <laughs> I'm out. I don't need to be drunk to do that, but 
Thanks. Whoa. Spitting on people is actually assault <laughs> these days, Eve, so expect a charge. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, if you didn't do anything cool, did you at least read something cool? No, nothing I can recommend. Oh, okay. A book that you want to tell people to stay away from? No, I don't feel that strongly about it. All right. Well, I mean, we love have your two cents. So anything you want to yeah. give, we'd love to have it. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Um, so Eve, <laughs> I got a fun fact for, for you. Mm. Did you know that now Inside Out 2 is the highest grossing Pixar film? Oh, that's cool, I guess. How do you feel about that? Why don't you like Inside Out? I don't know. I found it boring. Well, okay. It just wasn't for uh, me. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'm curious if Twisters 2 is going to be one of the best Twister movies. And, you know, it's kind of apropos with everywhere in the Middle West just getting absolutely devoured by fucking tornadoes from Chicago all the way down through Iowa, Kansas. Maybe it gets La Bodega. Actually, we don't wish that on anybody. I was just kidding. But at the same time, Chris, the weather's going to be a little bit milder, but it is kind of primo movie weather. Like, go cool off, sneak in some candy, get a large Coca-Cola, and just enjoy the show. It's, it's good matinee weather. Like, that mid part in the day, like, just go see a movie, and then when you get out, it might be a little cooler, and you got the rest of the night ahead of you. Yeah, I was thinking, like, hit a four o'clock before, like, the kids all get in there. And then when you get out, go to a Texas roadhouse, play a couple of games at the arcade, a little Area 51. I like that. Yeah. Well, do you have anything besides the Big E, which is going down this evening? What do we have on the docket? You got the Brixton party fit sesh. Anything else cool that we need to talk about? I'm hitting up Dylan Amphitheater Friday evening. Ooh, who's playing? Lake Street Dive. Oh, so we were just talking about Chicago. Look at that. Yeah, so, I mean, that ought to be fun. And, like, I got my um, future sister-in-law in town. So she's going to head up there with us this Friday evening. Um, the only thing is it's going to be one of those, like, we're going to go up, see it, and then drive back. So uh, The turn and burn? Yeah. Are you the sober one? I think so. You know, I've been I've been – off the booze since Sunday. So uh, we're doing well so far. Hey, I, I'm proud of you. Um, I'm going to start a slight detox. We're going to take it one week at a time. I'm not going to say 30 days. I'm not going to say two weeks. We're going to take it one week at a time. But on Friday, after the big eat, I'm just going to slow my roll. I'm just going to let the body recharge because we've been going 90 to nothing. And just finish out dry July and then go from there, you know? I yeah, think that's I the plan. I'm going to try to limit myself to, like, on the weekends, like, one or two drinks. I mean, you're smarter than I. I feel like I'm just going to give my liver a solid week and a half to do it. You know, see if it cleanses me, get rid of these bags under my eyes. But I'll tell you, I'm probably going to buy a 12-pack of Dr. Peppers, and I'm going to put those fuckers down on Friday evening when I cook a steak. Um, I also saw Sean Brock was talking about something the other day, as a lot of folks know in the culinary scene, that he doesn't drink anymore, despite you know being going viral for goofing off with Bourdain and getting plastered and going to Waffle House years ago. He's been clean and sober for a hot minute, but he was promoting these wines that it starts with a p but all that yeah and so he was talking about how it's nice to be able to like try these you know other beverages it doesn't always have to be a mocktail or a soda but to be able to pair it well with like a red meat or something of that nature and i was like huh that actually sounds like a really neat idea so i may take the um i can't remember it's gonna kill me that i don't know it and i'll have to put it in a post tomorrow so that listeners know but i may give it a whirl and check one of those out and just see so that you know we have a lot of folks in the restaurant industry and friends of ours from the hospitality space that don't drink and so if we were able to use this time to kind of highlight whether it's mocktails or cannabis beverages things that were substituting alcohol to not only uh kind of still feel like we're a part of the game because i feel like boredom is definitely part of the issues you know speaking with friends that are sober 
you know, to falling back off the wagon, but also being in circumstances where everybody else is drinking and you're like, well, I want to still be around my friends. So I may try one. I think it's like called proxy or proximity or something like that. Yeah. Um, and I may try one of those because we have friends, you know, going out this weekend. It may be a fun opportunity for like a group sesh hang, but drink something that's non-alcoholic. Maybe it's sugar free and a little bit better for your body. I'm not scared, but it'd be kind of nice to be able to give some feedback for that side of the industry. As we always talk about wine, hard liquor, food, obviously, and weed. Well, you know, it's crazy, like, because obviously, like, the non-alcoholic beer game has made, like, vast improvements over the years. And it's kind of crazy to think that, I mean, or at least until this, I really haven't ever heard of a company or anything, like, trying to, like, offer a consumer a non-alcoholic wine type. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I imagine, like, maybe the flavor profiles or maybe the fact, you know, I mean, cause clearly there has to be a market for it. I mean, like, you know, if you used to be a big wine drinker, clearly you want that experience somewhat or whatever. Um, so yeah, I, and mocktails are this. huge. It's yeah. not, not just non-alcoholic beers, but mocktails. And I think there was an article in your own magazine this week talking about, you know, it's not necessarily fucking easy to make a mocktail. Like it shouldn't be $6. It was never the alcohol that truly juiced it up, you know, everything yeah. else, you know, and when you're using like fresh fruits and other things to make a fun and inviting beverage that's non-alcoholic, it's still going to cost you 10, 12, $15 in some locations because there's still effort going into it. There's still fresh squeezed juices. You know, the same reason we love a strawberry margarita from a nice location, they're juicing their own fucking fresh fruit, you know, yeah. some are, you, you know, that's the same kind of mentality you have to have. But it'd be nice to be able to contribute to that conversation instead of just being some drunk piece of shit all the time. Um, so we're going to do I'm going to do a couple week detox before football season gets here. Grab let's let's grab one of those bottles. Let's find out how we can get them and let's do a taste test on a pod. I'm definitely down like Charlie Brown. Um, in addition to that, you obviously recap your weekend ahead. I'm going to keep it a little light just because we went 90 to nothing last week. Probably do some yard work um and trying to escape some of the heat obviously it's mid 80s that's not too terribly bad but i think it's time for me to just relax and so i don't have anything too exciting i sound like eve over here except you don't have a book to read yeah well it sounds like she's not even doing the book reports after we asked her to so maybe i have to pick up the slack there i'll go get a good coloring i'd book love to hear your book report Kip. i've read a book or two i'm sure I read Stanley Tucci's um, Kitchen, Com and then I read Bourdain's Kitchen Confidential. I read The Great Gatsby, uh, and a couple John Grisham books. When and did you read The Great Gatsby? How long ago was that? Like seventh, eighth grade, yeah. like everybody else in America. Exactly. You can't. <laughs> when was the last time you read it, weirdo? Did I'm not just... quoting books I read in high school. I'm just saying well, I've read books before. I know. But all the same, since you're not going to tell our folks about cool books, I might as well go find a cool book. It would take me like a month to read a book. So mine would have to be a little more sporadic. But Eve, who reads five books, uh, I thought she would have something more compelling. So I can't wait for next week's book reading in the park. Yeah, maybe. Heck Does yeah. that sound bad? Yeah, we'll keep, you know, we'll keep it light. Um, obviously, yeah, we've been talking French fries recently. A lot of folks recommending us dip them in ranch. I'm against that. It's just a personal thing. But at the same time, that's about all I got. Maybe go try some new French fries out this weekend. The new location on Tennyson is called Two Hands. They have locations both in Nashville and New York. Um, Australian owner, the dude, uh, I don't know if it's all technically Australian cuisine, but I think it's just fresh, clean eats. And then obviously some fun snacks as they're uh, just catty corner from bakery four. So I think that one's going to be on my docket for this weekend. Yeah. Besides, let, me, let me know how that is. Yeah. It seems like it's right up your alley. You're a little, usually a little more health conscious seeing as I just came from a fucking hamburger eating contest. How many did you put down? I ate a two patty. I'm a piece of shit. I was more there to kind of film and document on behalf of our friends 
Eddie and Evan over at King of Wings. But for those that are curious, obviously, we've talked about their Snipe Burgers before, which are their smash patties. You can get up to six on a regular basis, like when they do their pop-ups. But for what they're doing this summer, just to kind of have some fun with it, they're doing a little Snipe Beat the Meat Challenge instead of Beat the Heat or anything else. Um, And it can go from seven to 30. And if you are the person that's the first one to complete that patty amount, then you get to name what that sandwich is and you get your name on the wall and that will stay there all year long. So once all of them are complete, then the challenge is over. And I think it's going to take a little while because watching some of these guys trying to knock back 15 patties, 13 patties, I feel for them, Chris. Like my heart was palping, like pumping for them. And my stomach hurt for them. I felt for them bad. What, what's the time limit again? You get 30 minutes from once you touch, like the burger touches your plate or the whatever, touches your table. And then it can only be ordered from the hours of 4 to 5 p.m. So if you get in there at 4.59, you know, like you have to get out of work early or whatever and get out to Golden, so be it. But if you order at 4.59, they'll still let you compete but it's just a fun little happy hour challenge. And then if you get it, your meal is, I can't remember if it's fully comped or like half comped or something of that nature. You get a free t-shirt, you get a bunch of swag, things like that. But I had a, a good twofer, two patties, all the fixings and a large basket of fries. And I, I was elated. I went home smiling, except for a little tear came out of my eye for the guys that went hard, went hard for it. But I'm going to go back next Wednesday and see if some of our friends can do it. Folks like Fat Guy or Jeremy, get Lindell out there. He can fucking eat like a champion. Shit like that. Yeah, it, it's gonna take. It's gonna take an athlete. How many do you think you could put down? Like, let's say it was Sunday. Like you were talking about getting wings from King of Wings because we were all deathly hungover from being overserved or overserving ourselves. I mean, you know, the tough thing with those is there's so much like butter and everything in there. Like, I mean, you know, I like the traditional just two patty smash burger. Um, but if I had to go, I mean, fuck, and knowing that I would feel like shit, I feel like I could easily do six. Six is a big order, too. Like, the most I've ever done is a four, and I felt like a bag of shit afterwards. Yeah. Like, but six, I've, like, seen those hexes, as they call them. It just looks like a, a tough challenge. And I believe in you. And you have to kind of be in the wrong slash right headspace. Right. As well as unbelievably hungry. Like, you're famished because maybe you partied all day Saturday and forgot to have supper kind of thing. And be like, this first meal I'm going to eat is going to fuck me up. And then I'm going to get on the couch kind of. Vibe. And you got it. I would imagine like the faster you eat it, the better off you are. You know, yeah, because like, you like trick the brain a little bit. Yeah. And it doesn't always get to your stomach right away. So like, I think I think just go into town on it, like consuming it within five minutes. Yeah. And, well, five minutes, maybe a tall order. But the gentleman who ate 12 patties, Dave, shout out to Dave. He did it in 15 minutes. And he just threw the last one back. And he was like, see ya. It was awesome. Dude, he did it with the ease. And I think he finished his French fries too. It was really impressive feat. I feel for the guys that 13 and 15 patties, they just, the guy that got was on 13, he ate 12.8 hamburgers. And he just had these little like bite size, like almost like crumbles of beef left over. And he was like trying to get them down. And he was like sweating. And it's just like, once you hit a wall, I feel like your body's like, fuck off. Eve, how many could you put down? Maybe three. Maybe if I'm really hungry, four. I want to see Eve put down four. Eve. Like, including a bun and everything, right? Not just the yeah, bun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, probably. Four, if I, maybe I was like super hungry that day, but probably three would be my limit. Um, but I think that just about wraps it up. We'll be back next week with new guests joining us on the pod. Hint, hint, it's a chef. We may have to use Zoom because they are not in town. As well as we'll recap the weekend and we'll see how Kip's doing four days sober. So keep your fingers crossed. Bring some extra little chips so that um, I get to award myself. I'm looking at you, Eve. And we're going to be talking Olympics next week. 
Ooh. Oh, yeah. I saw where the mayor jumped in. Uh, she must have had all sorts of shots before. She jumped in the sins. Oh, of Perry? Yeah. Okay. I was like, what did Mike Johnson do? Okay, here's a quick question before we get out of here. There was a body found in the Cherry Creek River just between Spear and Washington Street. Do you think that – would you rather swim in the Parisian River or the river that the homeless people throw their needles and defecate in? I'd probably rather swim in the Cherry Creek, that creek. Really? Where the dead body was found? Yeah. A hundred percent, dude. The sin is nasty. I mean, that's just been like where sewage has gone for thousands of years. I mean, that's true. But I mean, the amount of needles, the high density needle count in the the Platte and the Cherry Creek River, I imagine, or whatever the river is that runs through there. I guess that is the Cherry Creek one because the Platte would run down Santa Fe. I bet that thing is just littered with just, oh. But, yeah, they found a dead body in there. And I hate it for the person that passed. Um, sending well wishes and all the thoughts and prayers to their family. As I'm sure it's not an easy thing to handle, but it hurts my heart a little bit. We don't ever want to see a Denverite pass away and hopefully – you know, not for circumstances such as drowning. And I don't know if that was the case. It could have very well been an overdose or something else totally. But either way, I thought we should at least say a kind of ode for that person that passed. So we're thinking of that person. We're going to avoid swimming in any lakes and rivers that we're not used to this weekend. But that until is- next week, y'all stay high, stay hungry. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Uh, the big eat. Big eat tomorrow. Cheers.